The 3060 Ti is a great GPU that can become even better after some simple overclocking. Today I'm going to show you how to do it. If you want to boost your 3060 Ti's performance, you can do it quite easily and get additional 5, 7, maybe even 10% more FPS in your games. On my model, the 3060 Ti OC Tough from Asus, I was able to squeeze out roughly 7% more. Before we start with the OC, there is some prerequisites. You need an overclocking software, a stress testing tool, and you need to make sure you have enough power to support the increased load. If you have that, feel free to skip ahead to the actual overclocking procedure. In terms of software, um, I have been using uh, MSI Afterburner for quite some time now. I really like because it's very simple, doesn't get in your way, it does what you tell it to and uh, well, it basically gets the job done. Uh, we'll go through the details of what you can see in here and what you should and shouldn't be touching in just a second. Uh, another thing I really like and can really recommend is the graphs which show you the temperature, the power draw, uh, the boost performance and so on and so forth. So it's pretty neat and pretty useful as well. Second thing you need is a stress testing tool. I use Unigine Heaven as the first, uh, let's say, test for the, uh, for the overclocked settings. I just turn it on after some minor tweaks and see if it crashes it means that i did too much if it doesn't crash it means there is some space to overclock a bit more so it's it's great it's very lightweight and um, it works really well for the initial testing we'll talk about the more more stress testing more detailed testing especially in games in just a second and the third thing is make sure you have some additional power on your power supply because when you overclock your gpu or if you overclock your cpu you will get more power draw. So if you have a power supply that barely meets the prerequisites, that it's lower than the recommended power supply on the manufacturer's website, just be careful, uh, watch the power draw because you might uh, you know, cause, the, cause the system to freeze, cause it to crash, and in very, very, very rare cases, it might even damage your PC. So if you went with a power supply recommended by the manufacturer of your GPU, you should be fine because they usually, most of the time, include also the headroom for overclocking. All right, let's get into the procedure right now. I'm just going to reset everything here. So there is no, uh, you know, no, 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 nothing, nothing confuses you. Uh, the main thing you should be um, looking at is the clock speeds here and the, uh, the fan speeds here. We're not going to be touching uh, voltage today. We're just going to do some simple overclocking, no undervolting, overvolting and so on. Uh, something that should not and probably will not damage your GPU. So you have these two sliders here in the middle, which one is the core clock speed, the other is the memory clock speed. Uh, and we're going to be playing mainly with that. But before we do that, I will just raise the power limit of the GPU to the maximum to 108%. And I'm going to save it. Remember to apply all the settings after you've changed it because they do not apply automatically. You need to press the button here. So um, the first thing we'll do is look for the maximum uh, core clock boost that we can apply or core clock overclock that we could apply. And um, then we'll go with the memory. Uh, you can do it either way. I just prefer doing it with the core clock because it's much easier to find, at least in my opinion. So initially I will do something like plus 100 uh, megahertz on the core clock, save the settings. And then in order to, che to check if the new, uh, newly applied settings are stable, I'll just run the benchmarking tool. So normally I would just let the benchmarking tool do all of the job, do all of the 26 scenes and look for a moment if it crashes or not. If it doesn't crash, then it's great. We can improve the overclocking a bit more. But if it crashes, then it means that we went overboard and we need to reduce. But uh, I already know what the sweet spot is, so I'm just going to uh, quit right here. And now I'm going to increase the core clock speed a bit further. So this time we're going to do plus 200. We're going to apply it. It has been applied. And now we're going to rerun the test again. The benchmark is running right now. It should be pretty stable. The 200 plus 200 megahertz is fine for the Unigine Heaven. So we shouldn't see any crashes, but we'll just let it run for a while, while or two. And I will show you in just a second what happens if you go overboard with the uh, overclocking and uh, pick a too big value and what to expect, how does it look like and how to react uh, when you get the numbers wrong. So I'm just going to stop right here. And by the way, I'm going to switch to external camera because uh, the, when the GPU is crashing, it might cause my OBS to freeze. So right now we'll just switch to an external camera. 
All right, so I'm going to show you what it looks like when you overdo the overclocking on the core clocks. I'm going to set it to 250, which is well above the stable limit. As I said, I've tested it before and it should be unstable. I'm going to save the settings and I'm going to run the benchmark and we'll see how it behaves. Hopefully it will crash uh, pretty soon, and but we'll see. Right out of the bat, just after starting the benchmark, it already crashed. We're going to be booted back to the desktop really soon. We have a black screen, nothing to worry about. As you can see, uh, the benchmark has closed, which means the overclocking is unstable. So I'm going to reduce it back to 200, which seems to be the stable value, apply it and rerun the test just to be sure. Uh, and the next step is to increase the memory clocks and you do it basically the same way. Although here I like to apply a slightly bigger increase, for, for example, 500. And then I tested, I ran a couple of uh, Unigine Heaven runs uh, with the increased memory clocks. If it's fine, I increase it by another 500 until it becomes unstable again and it, started crash, it starts crashing or we see some artifacts on the screen. Then it's a signal for you that the memory clock speeds are unstable and it's too much and you should reduce it. And you reduce it either by 100 uh, minus 100 megahertz or whatever you prefer and uh, if you want to be completely sure that your overclocking is stable you should do a long-term test which can take up to six hours so leave your computer overnight with the benchmark running in the background and you will see in the morning whether it crashed or not if it didn't crash means everything is stable but if it did you need to reduce the core clock speeds and do the test yet again it is a time consuming process however you will get increased performance out of your gpu like i said in my case it was around plus seven percent which is quite an impressive value taking into consideration that all of the modern gpus are quite heavily overclocked and pushed to the very limit and the final thing i suggest doing is just turning on a game that you play on a regular basis for me it's modern warfare 2022 and uh, yeah, having a session or two with your friends on a custom map or just jumping into non-ranked game should also help you identify any pain points your overclocking might have. I encountered some instabilities in Modern Warfare when I was browsing the menu. I reduced the overclocking and after that, after uh, toning down the overclock, it was really stable and I was able to play for a couple of hours without any issues. So just be careful with that and if you see any instabilities, Remember to go back to after um, remember to go back to afterburner and just reduce the overall uh, overclocking and you should be fine. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. I'm Laserk and I'll see you soon.